Welcome back all mages to VFX Mage, where today we are going to break down how to create our own version of the Percy Jackson TV series logo reveal. And this is my small variation of it. Now stay till the very end where I show you how to import this type of text from Photoshop as well as give you other variations of what I did with this title sequence. And as always, if you like learning the behind the scenes magic of movies, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We will be doing more VFX tutorials and motion graphics along with breakdowns of VFX for our more popular TV shows and movies. Let's get started. We start off with, of course, opening up After Effects. Let's create a new comp. I'm just keeping the racial 1920 by 1080, just standard HD, since that is the frame of my videos. We are then going to create a solid. This will then be added on with a four color effect. This is to make sure that our solid isn't just one solid color and it has a little bit of depth. Now you can change the color to fit whatever you want. I'm going for an underwater thing, so I'm going into the greens and blues color. Now to really make it an underwater feel, you do want those um, bubble type particles to just add a uh, sense of underwaterness. Now initially you may automatically go to the bubble effect that After Effects does. You can definitely use those. I think personally they're a little too big for the aesthetic that I'm going for. So I'm actually going to not use the bubble tool and go on to the snow preset tool in the effects panel. I adjusted the wind to be negative 0.2 and the speed to be a negative 0.1. The reason that I put the speed in a negative set even though it doesn't show it, is to make sure that the snow floats upward instead of downward uh, since we are underwater rather than there being actual snow. I also increase the velocity of size to about 72.2 and I am also increasing the size overall to about 600. I really want you to see those flakes. And I am decreasing the flake numbers to 500, uh, just so that they will be more spread out and not look uh, so compact, like I would imagine underwater would maybe look like. Now you can adjust these numbers to your liking. Again, it's going to your aesthetic, uh, not just mine, but that's just what I did on my side. To get that light ray effect of underwater, I'm going to use the preset tool light ray onto my solid to get that cone triangle type shape look. Now to get that look with the light ray, you do have to drag the light source right above the comp to just get that look. And we can still mess around with all of the toolkits of the preset. I'm just going to increase intensity. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a shape tool. I'm going to use the shape, the star shape, just because it's going to give me the effect that I want. 
Now what we're doing is we're just adding a godlike ray light to this comp and I'm kind of cheating a little bit by using a shape rather than using the ray tool indefinite to keep that wavy glowing light look. So I went ahead and made the shape as small as possible. Then I went into the pattern itself and then I decreased the internal radius so that the star part kind of disappears and we're just left with these lines of rays that we're going to manipulate. You then add points to this star just to add that effect. Now to make this user friendly, I'm going to create a control panel layer and so how I'll do that is I'll just make a null so it doesn't actually affect uh, my comp until I want it to. Then I'm going to be adding all the controllers that I want. Now the purpose for a control layer like this is so that you could first of all have it on top. Second of all, if you don't want um, anyone that is theoretically going to use this to have to go into every layer or find every layer, um, this just gives them the freedom to, to just look at this control layer and be able to, by your naming conventions, be able to tweak uh, what is easily tweakable. You don't have to do this part. Um, and if you want, I'll link down below where you can go ahead and skip this chapter. How to create these sliders on your new control layer is simple. You right click, go to expression controls and then that will give you all your options of control tools that you can create. I'm just going to go with the basic slider and then once you do that you're going to rename all of your sliders um, depending on what you want to control. Try to make it as clear as possible so that people can intuitively just use them and then from that, you're just going to go into your other layers and you're going to parent uh, whatever item that you want to control into that control slider. And as easy as that, you now can control all of these elements in under one no layer. And then I am going to change the color of my shape only to be white because I do want it to be a light rather than a obvious shape. Now I'm going to move the shape up to where I want the look to be. Just remembering everything that is in the comp is what you'll see and what will be exported so it does not matter that half the shape is outside of the comp. So this is going to give it that uh, wavy look that I wanted. However, I am still going to add a mask to this shape layer so that only what is in the mask is shown. It's just going to give it more of the effect that the light is creating the shimmer rather than it being a shape. In order to mask this ray and not really mess with my animation of the light, I'm just going to pre-comp 
this shape layer into a pre-comp and then mask out that pre-comp. It's a simple way to get out of messing with the layer in your comp and not having it break. Now there are two ways of getting the letters that you want on here. So option one is that you just use the text tool in After Effects. You get a font you really like and you use that um, with a little bit of tweaks. You can make it into a 3D object, adding backdrop. Um, as well as light refractance will give you a 3ds look and then you will go ahead and add a vignette to this comp after you have gotten the text just how you like it and this will give you option one of my take on this title sequence. Now for the title sequence that you see at the beginning of this video, I actually got a alphabet texture comp from Photoshop. So this was using things like Envato Elements, which is a paid library for graphics and source materials, as well as other After Effects comps. And so this allowed me to get more of that um, Greek type of font that I wanted without having to look for that font. I will just open up Photoshop, go ahead and place the letters as I want to spell out my channel name. A reminder, if you are liking these types of videos and really want to dive deep into the behind the scenes magic of movies and TV shows, please don't forget to like and subscribe as always. And comment down below which version do you guys like more or did you guys find other tricks to make this a more dynamic comp. So now that I have everything placed in the right order, I'm just going to export it as a PNG just so that I can have that transparency background. And then I'm going to line it up in my comp, remove the text layer, replace it with the image and if you want you can always add a little bit of backdrop to this layer just to give it a little bit of depth um, and under there than that you're all set now i did two two versions of this one so i am going to list them here I really liked the border of the Greek uh, kind of style, so I did do one version with that uh, to give it more of a Greek gods type of feel. Uh, and then of course the one that I actually ended up going with in my Percy Jackson uh, video where I go through the hero's journey of both Percy Jackson the TV show and movie and so if you are interested to see what the Percy Jackson breakdown video was of the hero's journey please click this video down below and as always thank you guys for watching I hope you gained value from it and if you did please like and subscribe bye now